lovies lovies welcome to yet another episode of love tanisha come on come in the room come 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 in the room i'm so excited this is part two of 25 things i have learned in 25 plus years of living i hope that in part one there were at least some that you could relate to some that you could learn from if so drop in the comments leave reviews on some of the lessons that you too have learned in your years of living in your years of experience come on let's dive into part two i believe we left off at number 13 so here goes number 14. if you offend apologize i didn't say if you were wrong so this is one that i had to learn because i can be a little stubborn i'm gonna say i used to be a little stubborn because i am a new creature in christ <laughs> all the things are washed away so i'm gonna say i used to be stubborn which means this was you know just a lesson i had to learn over time because i am a i was a person that if i'm right i'm right i don't you know i i in the past i didn't really care if you know it hurt your feelings or if you were offended if it was truth you know i just felt like it's true so you know and in my maturity i have learned that as saints as christians as believers we are not to glory in causing other people to be offended we are not to glory in causing you know offenses so whether true or false whether what you're saying is valid or not the bible talks about with love and kindness have i drawn thee so it didn't say with with honesty with brutal honesty it didn't say you know with rebuke but it said with love and kindness have i drawn thee which means it doesn't matter if what i'm saying is true it doesn't matter if what i'm saying might be accurate if it has caused offense you owe that person in apology and again i am still learning for me it is always like you know but i was right but it's like, it doesn't matter if you were right. You have wounded someone's heart and you've wounded someone's soul. You know, it's hard to come back from that when you've offended someone. Romans 14 verse 19 says, So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for building up one another. So again, it's less about, you know, whether or not what we're saying is true. It's more about is what you're saying building this person up? is what you're saying causing peace you know the bible says again let us pursue what makes for peace so we are to go after what makes for peace we are to go after anything that calls for a peaceful situation so apologize if you offend not if you're wrong just simply if you offend you could be right but you still owe an apology to whomever if you have caused an offense number 15 don't be so confrontational trust god to defend you in his own time i am still learning that i am still learning that because you know it is hurtful it can be painful when people make up things about you that's the furthest from the truth and sometimes it's people who actually don't know you that make up things but sometimes it's people that know you you know that choose to believe the lies or the rumors and it can be again it just heartbreaking um so i'm learning to not always be so confrontational i'm a very direct person i'm a very forward person um a lot of times even when i think i'm you know being gentle it's still forward because I, I just shoot straight to the punch. I'm, I can be very forward, um, which means when I find myself, you know, in situations where something has been said that's not true, it is my nature to want to confront. It is my nature to want to go and correct the thing that's been said that's not accurate or not true. But how many know, you know, when you trust God to be your defense, you don't take up those crosses. When you trust God to be your defense, there are certain arguments or conversations you don't even entertain because you already know, God, I trust you to handle it. I trust you to uncover. I trust you to allow the truth to come out. God, I trust you. You know, you. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my heart. I trust you even with my reputation. So it removes the pressure. It relieves the pressure when you just trust God to be your defense. 
only pride causes us to want to clear our name because we're focused on self. We're focused on how we look. We fo we're focused on how we're going to be perceived. But if we walk in humility, which is a whole nother conversation, but if we walk in humility, and we, you know, do our best to rid ourselves of pride, we won't be so consumed with what people think about us, you know? So that is something I'm still learning. Don't be so confrontational. The Lord is going to defend you when the time is right. Number 16, remain exclusive. People value your presence more when they are not afforded it all the time. I have learned that, you know, in, in my years of growing, I'm a social butterfly. I am an extrovert. So I used to feel like I needed to be on every scene. I used to feel like I needed to be at every event. I used to feel like I need to be at, you know, I needed to accept every invitation. And though it's okay to go out and enjoy yourself, you know, it's still wisdom, I believe to not make everything you're invited to, to turn, to say no to some things, to turn down some invitations. You know why? Because when you do decide to go, people value your presence. It's not like, oh, I just saw her last week. It's like, oh my goodness, it's so good to see you, you know? So I had to learn that, Tanisha, you don't have to be everywhere all the time. You don't have to say yes all the time. You're invited to a million things. It's okay to turn some things down. Remain exclusive. You know, everyone doesn't have a Bentley. It's exclusive. Everyone doesn't have a Rolls Royce. It's, ex it's exclusive, you know? So those things are exclusive and those things people value because it's not something they see all the time. You don't just always see a Bentley going down the road. You don't just always see, you know, certain vehicles going down the road. But when you do see them, because you don't see them often, you're like, oh my gosh, look at that. You know, you value it more. Same goes with us. People value our presence more when they don't have access to it all the time. It's okay to remain exclusive. Number 17, be careful who you share sensitive information with. A person that will bring a bone will take one back with them. I pray that everyone learns this sooner than later. Be careful who you share sensitive information with. It does not mean that people can't be trusted if you choose not to share information with them. But I have learned over time, there are certain people assigned to carry certain information. You know, everyone can't handle all things. Everyone can't handle, you know, all topics. You might can go to this friend about marriage problems. You might can go to this friend about finance problems. You might can go to this friend about family problems. But whoever you go to, be careful who you share sensitive information with, especially when you notice that whoever you're around is constantly bringing information back to you about other people. If they bring information to you about others, it is quite possible they're taking information from you and delivering it to others as well. So again, be careful who you share sensitive information with. If you could learn this early, you would save yourself a lot of heartache. Number 18, don't be so quick to throw people away. Communicate to them what hurt you. We live in a generation where everybody just feels like it's okay to just cut people off. You need to cut it. No, you don't need to cut it. <laughs> there are certain relationships and friendships and situationships and entanglements that you probably need to cut. But there are other relationships and friendships that are God ordained, that are God designed. And just because you have a disagreement, just because you may have an argument, just because maybe they did something that you may deem almost unforgivable, communicate to them what hurt you. We have to stop being so quick to discard people because it goes back to our heavenly father. He's not quick to discard us. It's nothing that we can do that causes him to throw us away. So if we are to live like him and love like him, 
then we have to make sure we're showing that same mercy to our fellow brothers and sisters. Communicate to them what hurt you. Communicate that what they said hurt your feelings. Communicate that the decision they made was not a decision that you appreciated. But don't be so quick. Just pray. Pray about which relationships to, to keep close and which relationships to let go. But don't let that be your first you know, instinct, oh, I'm going to cut her off or I'm going to cut him off because there are some relationships that are assigned to you. God literally has them in your life for a reason, whether you to learn from them or them to learn from you. So pray about who to cut off. And most importantly, let's, let's effectively communicate. I have been dropped before as a friend and it is not a good feeling. What do you mean by dropped? I've had one situation where um, someone just stopped talking to me for no reason. I literally got on social media, learned that I was blocked um, on social media, blocked via phone, via text. And I learned from someone else what I did that, you know, made them feel uncomfortable or hurt their feelings. But they never communicated that to me. And it was painful because for a while, I'm like, what did I do to you? You know, somebody that you're used to talking to every day, all of a sudden, just cut you off. And it was painful. And when I look back on that situation, I just, I realize now that they just didn't know to how to communicate, but I never want to be that person to just cut people off without communicating to them what hurt me. Number 19, don't make anyone's relationship your goal. They have their own battles you know nothing about. Set your own standards and stay committed to those. Once again, we live in a relationship goals generation where if you see something on social media, you automatically stamp it to be healthy. You automatically stamp it to be successful, not knowing any of the private battles, not knowing any of the private, you know, struggles. You just see what they've chosen to post and you automatically quote it as relationship goals. Word of advice. Don't make anyone's relationship your goal. Even relationships that you know for certain are healthy. Still, let's not make them your goal. You know why? Because everyone is graced to handle certain things. So just because this relationship over here was successful and they made it through health issues or they made it through financial issues or they made it through, you know, infidelity issues or they made whatever it is, doesn't mean that over here, this relationship has that same grace. You know, it, I, I do believe it is the will of God for every relationship to every God ordained relationship to, you know, withstand the battles and the struggles that come from life. However, people are graced to handle what they're graced to handle. So even like I say, relationships that are close to you that you know, they have a solid relationship. I think it's okay to gain inspiration, but let's not try to mimic or, or place certain relationships on pedestals because I can guarantee you, even your parents, your grandparents, whoever that you may feel are the closest to you, I can promise you this, they have had some battles you know nothing about. Just be inspired, but don't try to copy. Number 20, unnecessary attacks reveal insecurity. Don't take it personal when people who don't know you don't like you. It's simply because you exist. I don't think I need to go any further. Don't take it personal. It's simply because you exist. You did nothing wrong, especially if they don't know you. You did nothing wrong. I've had to learn that. You did nothing wrong. It's simply because you exist. Number 21, in every single area of your life, God knows when it's time. Relax. In every single area of your life, God knows when it is time. Just relax. Number 22, don't treat people how they have treated you. You treat people right regardless. God will deal with who mishandles you. I think that kind of goes back to one of the other lessons that I mentioned 
Don't be so confrontational and don't try to defend yourself. You know, you treat people right regardless because that's our instruction from our Heavenly Father to just treat people right. God has a way of dealing with the people that mishandles his children, that mishandles you. Number 23, we're getting close, we're getting to the end. Yes, you've seen strength displayed by women keeping it all together. But strength is also knowing that it's okay to cry and ask for help. It is okay to cry and it is okay to ask for help. If you've never been told that before, if you feel like you need the permission, let me give it to you. It is okay to ask for help and it is okay to cry. I grew up around very strong women, very strong women. They were not openly emotional. They, I'm sure, were emotional, but emotional behind closed doors. I didn't grow up seeing a lot of my female relatives break down and cry. I didn't grow up seeing a lot of my female relatives be emotional. And I think showing your emotions is a beautiful thing. Again, we aren't to be led by them, but I think displaying them is a beautiful thing. I didn't see that growing up. I saw women keeping it together. They kept it together. They remained strong through all types of life's adversities. And subsequently, I've grown up doing the same thing, keeping it together. But it is not always the most healthy when you are going through things that are traumatic, when you are going through things that are heartbreaking, when you are going through things that are tragic and you don't feel safe to cry. You don't feel safe to break down. You don't feel safe to just be a mess, even if it's for 10 minutes. And I am learning that it is okay. You know, you don't have to be your best self every day at all times. On Monday, your best self may look like a 10. On Tuesday, your best self may look like a seven, but whatever you have to offer, you just offer your best self. I want to give you that permission today that it is okay to not always be okay. Number 24, don't be so loyal that you override truth. Some people don't need a rider. They need a rod of correction. Don't be so loyal that you are willing to override truth. So if your friend has done something that's wrong, with love, tell them they've done something that's wrong because that's what friendships are. They are people that you can be accountable to, people that you can be accountable with. So not always do you need someone that's riding for you. I'm riding for my girl, I'm riding for my man, I'm riding for my family member. No, sometimes you gotta sit people down and correct them. Hey, that you didn't treat that person nicely. Hey, that was rude that you responded that way. Hey, you should not have done that. Hey, you should not have said that. You know, it, it takes maturity and it takes courage to challenge the people that's in our lives. But again, everyone doesn't need a writer. Some people need a rod of correction. Some people need to just be told the truth with love, but told the truth and privately told the truth. It's a dangerous thing when you are surrounded by people who won't correct you. It's a dangerous thing when you are surrounded by people who are all walking on eggshells because you don't like to be told anything that's wrong. No, humble yourself. And if you have people in your life that you trust, then they should be able to correct you and vice versa. You should be able to receive correction if something you've said or something you've done may not line up with how we are supposed to live and, and be as believers. Of course, we're gonna make mistakes. Of course, we're gonna fall short, but that's what you have accountability partners for. You have those friends and those relatives who will keep you accountable to make sure we are all living our best selves. And the last one, number 25, number 25. Continue to celebrate the people you care about. Continue to honor them. Continue to love on them. The seeds you plant will come back one day. So that one's simple, but I think it is so important. I think we are in a generation where honor is lost. 
but we are to honor those especially those of authority that's in our lives so let's just be men and women who are exemplifying honor and celebration the way it's supposed to be. Let's love on the people that God has blessed us with because we don't know when we will have our last moment on this earth. So just continue to celebrate the people that's in your life. Continue to love on them. And remember that I love you. I love you. 25 things I have learned in 25 plus years of living. I want you to drop in the comments some lessons that we've chatted about that have resonated with you that you've learned or even lessons that you're still learning. I want to hear your thoughts. 25 things that I have learned in 25 plus years of living. Dear lovies, we have all been gifted this beautiful thing called life. And in life, we are going to go through some heartbreak, some heartache, some disappointments. But through it all, they are causing lessons to be learned. So I encourage you, don't forget the lessons. Share the lessons with those around you. I have learned so much about life just from others not being selfish with their lessons, but imparting wisdom into me and teaching me the things that they've learned. So you be that person. You go and find someone that you can teach. Go find someone that you can share lessons with. Go find someone that you can impart wisdom into so that we can all be better men and women of God. Keep learning, keep living, keep being great. Love, Tanisha.